Hello children and welcome to the session today. Dear children, we are going to understand today about very interesting substances in our environment. These are the substances that we use every day in most of the things that we are using without realizing that we are using a whole range of metals and non-metals in our life. So, in this chapter, chapter 4, metals and non-metals, we are going to be learning about these two substances, the reactivity series of metals, some common metals and non-metals and their use, corrosion of metals, alloys and their utility. So, in the previous classes, we have learned that there are two kinds of substances. There are elements and there are compounds. So, what are compounds? Compounds are basically mixtures of two or more elements and what are elements? Elements are pure substances. Now these elements in nature can be divided into metals and non-metals. So this is a division for most of the elements. They are categorized as metals and non-metals. Now, metals as we can see here, cobalt, iron, gold and platinum, these usually have a very hard texture. They are sonorous, they are shiny in appearance. Copper, iron, gold, silver, platinum and aluminum are examples of metals. Now, metals usually have 1 to 3 electrons in their outer shells. Now, talking about non-metals, non-metals will be exactly the opposite of metals. So, if they are hard, they are going to be brittle. If they are sonorous, they are going to be non-sonorous. If they are shiny, these are going to be dull in appearance. So, some of the examples of non-metals are sulfur, phosphorus and antimony. Now, there are some substances which are a combination of properties of metals as well as non-metals. They are called metalloids. Now, occurrence of metals. Metals are highly reactive and they have a lot of affinity towards oxygen. They quickly react with oxygen. That is the reason in nature these metals are formed, found as minerals and these minerals are called mineral ores. To obtain the pure metal from the ore, an extraction process has to be conducted. Now, let us talk about the occurrence of non-metals. So, we know that hydrogen is the most abundant element present on earth and even in the universe. It is present in the combined state as water and it is also produced along with the production of natural gas and petroleum. Next, nitrogen. Nitrogen is the most important gas and it forms 78% of the total atmosphere, so it is readily available. Oxygen forms 21% of the atmosphere. It is the most abundant element on earth and oxygen is constantly produced by the process of photosynthesis. Carbon, it is present in crystalline pattern or it is present as a mineral. Now, diamond and graphite have a definite pattern of carbon atoms and they are considered to be the purest form of carbon. Coal is an amorphous form of carbon which contains 60 to 90 percent of carbon depending on the type of coal. Coming next to silicon. Silicon is readily available in the earth's crust in the form of silica and silicates. Sulfur is rarely found in free state. It is usually found as sulfites and sulfates. Now, let us talk about the properties of metals and non-metals. Let us first talk about the physical properties. Let us watch a video to understand the same. Metals are malleable and brittle. The property of metals to be hammered into thin sheets is called malleability. Take a piece of aluminium metal and place it on a block of iron. Beat it with a hammer. You will observe that the aluminium metal turns into a thin sheet. 
This property of metals is used to make utensils of copper, jewelry of gold and silver. Some metals like zinc and arsenic are brittle. They bake easily on hammering. Metals in gaseous and liquid state do not show the property of brittleness. Most metals can be drawn into thin wires. This property is called ductility. Copper, iron and aluminum are drawn very easily into wires. Non-metals are not ductile. They break when stretched. Metals show luster or shine when polished. That makes them good reflectors of light. Non-metals cannot be polished and have a dull appearance. Iodine and graphite are two non-metals that show some luster. Metals are good conductors of heat. That is why iron, copper and aluminum are used for making utensils and water boilers. However, bismuth and tungsten are poor conductors of heat. All non-metals with the exception of carbon are poor conductors of heat. Most metals are hard and strong. It is for this reason that iron is used to construct bridges, railway lines. However, sodium and potassium are soft metals and can be cut with a knife. Non-metals are not hard and break easily when a large weight is placed on them. Metals produce a ringing sound when they are struck with a hard material. This property of metals is called sonority. On the other hand, solid non-metals do not produce a ringing sound when they are struck. So children, here we have understood the different properties of metals and non-metals. Now let us understand the chemical properties of metals. First, let us understand the reaction with acids. Zinc plus 2 HCl gives ZnCl2 plus H2. 2 Na plus H2SO4 gives Na2SO4 plus H2. Calcium plus 2 HCl gives CaCl2 plus H2. 2 Al plus 6 HCl gives 2 AlCl3 plus 3 H2. From this we see that metals like zinc, sodium, potassium, magnesium, iron and aluminum replace hydrogen present in acids. These metals are also known as active metals. Metals like gold, silver and platinum do not react with acids and they are known as non-active metals. And non-metals do not react with dilute acids. Coming next to the reaction with bases. 2Al plus 2NaOH plus 2H2O give 2NaAlO2 plus 3H2. Zn plus 2NaOH plus 2H2O gives Na2ZnO2 plus 3H2. Therefore, we see that metals like aluminum and zinc react with bases to produce hydrogen. The reaction of non-metal with bases is very complex in nature. That is the reason it has not been discussed here. Let's talk about the reaction with water. Na plus H2O gives NaOH plus H2. K plus H2O gives KOH plus H2. Mg plus 2H2O gives MgOH2 plus H2. Zn plus H2O gives ZnO plus H2. 3Fe plus 4H2O give Fe3O4 plus 4H2. Therefore, we see that metals like sodium and potassium react with cold water to release hydrogen. Magnesium also reacts with water but it reacts with hot water. So, noble metals like gold, silver and platinum do not react with water. Reaction with air and oxygen. Now, metals quickly react with oxygen to form metallic oxides. Metallic oxides are basic in nature. So, iron reacts with oxygen and moisture to form rust. Magnesium reacts with oxygen and it is quickly burnt to form magnesium oxide. So, we see that metals readily react with oxygen. Now, non-metals like sulfur and phosphorus react with air to form their respective oxides. Now let's talk about the reactivity series of metals. All metals are not equally reactive. Some are very reactive, some are not reactive. 
all these metals have been placed in a reactivity series. Let us understand how the reactivity series works. Metals located above hydrogen in the reactivity series are capable to displace hydrogen from water in liquid state or in vapor state, acids and bases. Metals located below hydrogen in the reactivity series are displaced by hydrogen from their salt solutions or from their oxide ores. The metals placed in the topmost position replace the metals below them from their salt solutions. Such a type of reaction is known as displacement reaction. Now let's come to the uses of metals. Let's talk about iron first. So we know that iron industry is a huge industry in our own country. Where all is iron used? The brittle form of iron called pig iron. It is used in forming conduits, casings and machine parts, cylinders and tank. Wrought iron which is least in carbon is used in making chains, nuts, bolts, wires, agriculture tools and nowadays even furniture. Steel is a form of iron which is made by adding varying amount of carbon. It imparts different properties to iron like it makes it uh, corrosion free, rust free. And we all know that steel is used in all the utensils that we are practically using at home in the kitchen. Coming next to copper. Now copper is a very good conductor. So when something is a very good conductor of electricity, it is going to be used in making copper wires. And because it is a good conductor of heat, it is going to be used in making cookware. Heating tips of soldering iron radiators for cars, cooling pipes of air conditioners are all made up of copper. It is used in making different alloys like brass and bronze. Coming next to aluminum. Now aluminum is a highly malleable and ductile substance. Once again, it is used in making utensils, overhead cables in making doors and window frames. It is used to keep the food warm in aluminum foils and aluminum powder is used in making thermite mixture used to weld iron articles together. Now there is an alloy of aluminum which is called duraluminum which is used in making aircraft and parts of cars. Aluminum powder is dissolved in linseed oil and it is used as a protective paint. Zinc again is very conductive used in making dry cells and floats. It is coated over iron sheets to prevent rusting in a process known as galvanization and alloys German silver, bronze etc. use zinc to reduce the uh, destructive properties and increase the productive properties. Now there are other elements also which find application in different fields which you can read from the book. Coming next to the uses of non-metals. Let's understand the uses of silicon first. Silicon is considered as a semi-metal or the metalloid as it shows intermediate properties of metals and non-metals and hence finds its application in making semiconductors which are the backbone of electronics and computers. Silicons are compounds of silicon which are used as lubricants, polishes and waterproofing agents. Silicon implants are used in plastic surgery. Sulfur. Sulfur is used in making compounds like metal sulfide and sulfuric acid. Natural rubber when treated with sulfur becomes cross-linked and hard. This process is known as vulcanization and the vulcanized rubber is used in making tires and footwear soles. It is used in making sulfur drugs. It is used in making insecticides and fungicides. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is used in making match sticks, matchboxes, incense sticks and fireworks. Phosphate fertilizers consist of phosphorus. It helps in the growth of plants. Carbon. Diamond which is a form of carbon is used in making jewelry. Drill bits are fitted with diamond at the apex which helps in drilling through the igneous rocks. Coal, which is a form of carbon, is used as a fuel in domestic application and in industries. Coal is also used in thermal power stations to generate electric power. Graphite, which is a form of carbon, is used in making pencils and electrodes in batteries. Hydrogen. Hydrogen finds its application in extracting metals from their ores like copper, lead and tin. 
Hydrogen is considered to be a green fuel in the present century. Cryogenic engines use hydrogen as a primary fuel. Hydrogen is also used in manufacture of ammonia gas, which is a starter substance for manufacture of fertilizers and nitrates. Substances A mixture of hydrogen and oxygen is often used in the form of oxyhydrogen flame, which is a very high temperature and is used in cutting metals like titanium and tungsten. So, children, having understood different metals and non-metals, let us also understand what are noble metals. So, noble metals are the metals which do not react with any metal or non-metal. They are very low on the reactivity series and that is the reason they are known as noble metals. So, examples are platinum, gold and silver. So, we all know that gold and silver on account of their shiny appearance are used in making jewellery. Nowadays, platinum is also extensively used in making jewellery. Then, they are also used in electroplating material to coat over other inferior metals. And they form the economic backbone of the country and these metals are often invested in. Children, we have talked about the reaction of metals with oxygen. We have talked about how rust is formed. Now, let us understand the process of corrosion and rusting. When any iron object is exposed to damp air for a long time, it rusts. Rust is a red-brown substance formed on iron when iron combines with oxygen in the air and moisture. Iron plus water plus air gives iron oxide plus iron hydroxide which is rust. Take a spoonful of rust and dissolve it in a little water. The rust remains suspended in water. Shake the suspension well. Test the solution with blue and red litmus papers. You will observe that red litmus paper turns blue showing that the solution is basic in nature. Silver objects that are exposed to air get tarnished and turn black due to the formation of a thin silver sulphide layer on their surface. So, rusting we understand takes place both with iron and with copper as well. Now, how do you prevent corrosion? The prevention of corrosion is simple. It is one by putting a layer of paint. So, when you put paint, you cut off the supply of oxygen. The second is important thing is covering with another metal. Now, this can be done by either galvanization or electroplating. So, what is galvanization? They are cleaned thoroughly and dipped into molten zinc to deposit a layer of zinc on it. So, zinc is slightly less reactive and prevents the corrosion of the original metal. What is electroplating? Let us understand. The method of coating the metal surface of an article with a thin layer of a superior metal with the help of electric current is called electroplating. Artificial jewellery that is made of less expensive metal is electroplated with metals like gold and silver that are more expensive. Iron objects like taps, cutlery are electroplated with nickel and chromium to protect them from rusting. Take an iron spoon that needs to be electroplated. Make it the negative electrode or cathode. Take a thin sheet of pure copper and make it the positive electrode or anode. Use an acidic solution of copper sulfate solution as an electrolyte. When you pass electric current through the acidic copper sulfate solution, copper from the copper sulfate solution gets deposited on the surface of the iron spoon, forming a reddish layer on the spoon. Thus, iron spoon has been electroplated with copper. In a similar reaction, anodization of aluminum also takes place, which prevents its rusting. Children, nowadays, two metals are combined together to form a third product, which is known as alloying. Now, alloys are formed by metals like copper, aluminum and iron. These are mixed with other substances like nickel and chromium. These alloys are used in making aircraft parts, internal combustion engines, etc. So, in this chapter till now, we have learned about the different properties of metals and non-metals. We have also understood how they react with different things in nature and how they are affected by oxygen and how this the side effects of rusting and corrosion 
all this can be prevented by forming alloys or by anodization, galvanization and electroplating. So I hope you are ready to attempt the questions at the back. Thank you.